Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Erica. Today I am doing a craft podcast. It's the first one for 2024. So I try and shoot for a craft podcast every other month or so. And all it is is just a recap of everything I've been working on, maybe some sneak peeks of what's coming down the pike. And it's just a fun way for me to share all of my projects and kind of have a video diary of what I've been working on. So we're just gonna dive right in. I am gonna start off with some stuff from December because I feel like I haven't done a craft podcast for a few months. So you might've missed some of that. If you saw all of my December videos, I apologize. This might be a little bit of a repeat for you, but we're gonna start off with cross stitch. So I'm gonna start off with cross stitch. I do have a few pieces from December that I'm just gonna reshare because I don't think I've done a podcast since maybe October or November. I don't remember which one, so if it's a repeat, I do apologize. So I ended off December with my cup of cheer and I do have a video tutorial on showing how I finished it, but I just put it on this cute cutting board. I got this at Hobby Lobby and it was just in their seasonal decor section. I added some ribbon on the bottom with this cute little palm trim and then a bow at the top. And I did put my stitchy piece and my accent fabric piece on some of that sticky board. So I just think it turned out so cute. And I actually still have it sitting up in my room, even though technically, I guess it's a holiday decor. It is just sitting back here on my shelf. And I wanted to share it again because it was so much fun. This does match my quilt pattern, my cup of cheer quilt pattern. So each of the mugs matches the mugs on that quilt pattern. They're all different and a variety of fun colors. And then I did this cute little stitched looking border around the outside just to bring it all together. And I love doing these little dashed borders because to me it seems like a running stitch when you're sewing and I think it just gives it a cute handmade touch. But here is my cup of cheer cross stitch. So hopefully you all saw that. If not, this pattern is available in my store. And if it hasn't released yet, it will soon. I do have a finishing video ready to go for you guys for this one. Then really quickly, I'm just gonna show you the last houses. I know you've probably seen these all, but just in case you're new, we did a House of the Month cross stitch series. And so this is our last three houses, our October, November, and then December. And the December house is probably my favorite. It's just this cute little cozy cottage and a little bit of snow falling, an adorable, this sort of gives me a Norwegian star <laughs> vibe. I think it's so cute. There's greenery on the house. And then I did red gingham for my accent fabric. I finished all the houses the exact same way. I do have a finishing tutorial here on YouTube. And then that way I can just swap them out. I got this little cutting board from Hobby Lobby and and I just swap them out every month. There's magnets on the back of the board and washers on the back of my piece. And then I just swap it out. So here is the board that I used. I don't know if you can still get this because again, I got this from Hobby Lobby in 2023 and I've just been reusing it uh, for all of my pieces. But those were the last of the stitchy houses. This year we're doing a pillow of the month series. They're all gonna be a little bit seasonal. You can finish them however you want. I am trying to give you different finishing ideas for each one. So this is our January one with this cute little snowflake. They will all finish the same and the pattern does have a whole cloth finishing if you don't wanna make little pillows and you just want to do them all in one panel you can do that here is the February one and as I do the releases for these I put videos here on YouTube so you've probably seen them um, showing you how I'm finishing these just to give you some different ideas so here's January and February and then if it hasn't released yet this is a little sneak peek of the March pillow and I do have a video on how I finished that in that release video as well the patterns release the first of the month in my shop and then here on YouTube I do a video release for them and I show how I finish them off so that you have some ideas on how to finish off your pieces. You can of course finish them however you like, but I am trying to come up with different ideas on ways to finish these just to give you a little bit of variety. And that's all I have finished for cross stitch. Let's go ahead and dive in to my quilting. So I wanted some fun, fast project that you guys could do over the holidays. And so I did release a couple of super easy tutorials for you there. I have a gauze stars video. Those were really fun. They were super easy to make and perfect. You could do them with your kids even. So I did release that video and I wanted to share that here again with you if you wanna get a head start for this upcoming year. I also did a quilt as you go star where I just took my fabrics 
anything from my stash, just sew them together and then cut them out in this star shape. I just put them right sides together, sewed them together, stuffed them with some pillow stuffing. And then this is just a wooden dowel. I just left a little opening in the bottom for that dowel. And then I put a little ribbon on it. And then you can use the dowel to secure it to the top of your Christmas tree. So this was just a really fast and easy project. And then of course, this is also perfect for using up any of those little leftover scraps that you have. And then I thought I would share our last house of the month's quilts. So here is our November quilty house. This one uses fig tree prints and it was just so fun. And then all of these, if you missed them last year, every month there's a new house and they all have a different little quilt hanging on or near the house. So those are a lot of fun. So that was November. And I wanted to share my December house again. This one might've been my favorite out of all the houses. It's so cute and festive. And it's got those little candy canes on the side, a wreath. And this fabric is mostly fabric from my stash. This is Sweetwater Fabrics. I think this gingham on top might have been either a fig tree or a lorry hole print. I don't remember. I just have a variety of ginghams in my stash that I use for projects like this. And it was a little bit sad when I had to take this down and replace it with January. January is cute as well, but this little Christmas house was so much fun. So this year I mentioned that we are doing a pillow of the month instead of a house or truck of the month. Two years ago we did trucks, last year we did houses. This year we're doing pillows. And so here is the January pillow. We did this really fun snowflake. And this was from my stash. All of these fabrics were from my stash. You don't need a whole lot of fabric for these. So it's a great scrap buster. These were all prints from Bonnie and Camille that I've been hoarding for quite a few years actually. And I was so happy to be able to use some of of them. Much like the cross stitch, these are getting released. They're getting released in the same video. And then I am doing, I'm not doing a whole video tutorial for these, but I am showing any special techniques that I used for them. Hopefully any tips or tricks that can help you put these together. So for this one, I showed you how to do strip piecing because a lot of these pieces are the same. We have a little four patch in the corners. These pieces are all the same. And so I did strip piecing for almost this entire pattern and so then it was just really fast and easy to put together so if you missed the january video head back and check that out both the cross stitch and the quilted pillow tutorials are in that video for february i have this cute heart pillow this was one of the most fun ones to make i think it's actually gotten a little squishy because it's on my daughter's bed she loves this one she has a heart quilt which i'll show you in just a minute and then she has this pillow to match. So this one was a lot of fun. This one is great for scrap busting as well. You can make each one of these little hearts different. And I actually dug in my scraps. So I think I used all, there's nine hearts on here. I think I used nine different reds and I was going to use nine different pinks, but I think I didn't have enough um, so I think there's a couple that are duplicated in there, but these are really good for stash busting. So the patterns are written with red and pink. You can use any colors you like. You can dig into your scraps and just have a lot of fun with this, but this was the February pillow. And then another sneak peek here is our March pillow. And I apologize for the lighting. Uh, we just had a bunch of clouds come over. So <laughs> hopefully it's not too terrible, but here's the March pillow. And you saw that it matched the March cross stitch and I wanted to do something fun. I didn't want to do too many more clovery things. I did clovers for last year. I did clovers for the year before. So I just wanted something a little bit different this year. These pillows all finish at 20 by 20. So I think it would be a really fun quilt. You could make nine, like three across and three down and have a beautiful quilt with just a little extra sashing. So any of the quilt blocks, keep that in mind for these pillows of the month. And I think they would really lend themselves well to an entire quilt project. And that's actually a good idea. I was thinking I haven't done it yet, but I was thinking about releasing a finishing setting in case you don't want to make the pillows and you can put all of these into a quilt. That would be a lot of fun. Or you could take one of these blocks and make a whole quilt out of that as well. So leave me a comment in the comments below if you'd like to see a full quilt finishing for these pillows of the month. Instead of doing a pillow, you can just keep making blocks and then when you're done, put them all together into a finished quilt project. I again dove in my stash for these. So these are prints from Bonnie and Camille lines that I've had in my stash for a little bit. On the back, I used a light aqua gingham, and then I have this bigger aqua gingham for the binding. 
And then again, I added a cute little label here. Now this is the first pillow that I've put a binding on. Most of them, I've just put them right sides together and flipped them out so they don't have bindings. But this one did, so I went ahead and added a label. I should probably figure out how to add a label to the other ones that I haven't because they don't have any labels on them and that would be probably really cute. And I think what I would do is just put it right sides together. I, I put these two right sides together, sewed around them and then flipped the pillow out. So you could put a little tag in that seam so that when you flip it out, you have a little tag sticking out and I guess you just want to maybe put it on the bottom or somewhere it wouldn't be too in the way but also still let people know that it was handmade. I also finished my 2023 sew with me quilt and this quilt took so long to finish and I know the finishing video didn't release until January and it's because I was waiting on fabric. Once I got my backing, I decided I didn't like it so I ordered some new backing. That got delayed, it just got like lost <laughs> somewhere in the mail system. Finally it got here and I was able to finish this quilt and I'm so glad because it's so fun. I've always wanted just a traditional red and white sampler type quilt and that's what this was. So I hope you all enjoyed that. I've seen a lot of your pictures. Some of you did red and white, some of you did blue and white, some of you did multicolored. So this quilt, of course you can do it any way that you want. I'm really happy with how it finished out and Honestly, I wanted to get it done because there was so many delays with it. So I just did a large meander on this. I honestly just wanted to get it done. I don't know if you've ever felt like that before, but when you have a project that's like delayed or it's just taking forever and you get to those final steps, you just want it done. And a meander's my sort of go-to for if I'm not sure how to quilt something, I'll just do a meander on it or maybe some loops or something. And so this was really fun. I got it done quickly and now I love it. It's super soft, it's cuddly, it's exactly how I wanted it to be. And I did some fun sashing and cornerstones there. All of the, that information is in the finishing pattern. And if you sewed along with us, you can get the finishing for it in our Facebook group. If you're not already joined the Sew With Me Facebook group, if you're not already in that group, I highly recommend going over and joining us over there. I did release the finishing for this in early January for that. Um, and I know a lot of people were waiting here on YouTube for it. And I had to keep telling people, go get it out of the Facebook group. I haven't got my fabric yet. So thank you for being patient with that. But it is finally done. And now we can cuddle up on it. I have it hanging on a quilt ladder in my living room. And because it's red and white, I plan on bringing it out for Christmas, of course, but also for patriotic season. And then even for summer because red and white just screams picnic for me. So there's a lot of times of the year that I'll be able to display this fun quilt. So I hope you all enjoyed that quilt along for 2023. As you already probably know by now, we are not doing a block of the month for 2024. I'm just doing those pillows of the month this year between the block of the month, the house of the month, and all of the ornaments, the 12 ornaments. It was just a lot of work. So I'm taking a little bit of a break this year. I might bring it back for next year if I have enough requests. So let me know in the comments below if you like to see another sew with me for next year but I just wanted to take a break do something a little different this year and also I have something else big in the works that I can't really share yet but it will be hopefully coming soon and that's taking a lot of my time as well and I want to be able to have time to focus on that and still be able to give tutorials and things like that here. So I just thought trying to do all those monthly things was just a little bit too much. So I am taking a break through it for this year but it may be coming back for next year. So my latest finish is Hearts in Bloom. You may have already seen it because I did do a release video for it here on YouTube. And Hearts in Bloom is a sister quilt for Franny's Tree Farm. Franny's Tree Farm was released for Christmas 2022. And when I did that quilt layout, I knew that I wanted to use the same layout to do different seasons. And so I am going to be starting to do that. I don't know if I'm gonna do them all in one year because it's a lot of the same type of quilt, but I will be at least releasing them over the next few years and doing different seasonal versions of that. So this was my Valentine's version of Franny's Tree Farm. And this quilt layout I love because there's a lot of flexibility with it. The blocks are easy, beginner friendly, and it's just a lot of fun. Now the outside border is a little bit more, you have to be sort of precise, I guess, with that for all of those things to line up. But as long as you trim up your quilt center before you add those outer borders, you should be good to go. And there's enough white space around all of those blocks so that you can trim it up and not lose any points or anything like that. So I still like to call this a beginner friendly quilt. Hearts and Bloom finishes at 75 by 75. 
it's a nice queen size or lap quilt. I actually have a stair rail upstairs in our home. So I love putting it up on that stair rail to splay it or on one of my quilt ladders. And like I mentioned, my daughter actually had it on her bed and then she had our February pillow of the month on there with it and it looked so cute. For this quilt, I used a fabric line by, called I Love Us. It was a really fun bundle. It's got a lot of pinks and reds and low volume whites, of course hearts and there's little snow cone hearts and it was just such a fun line to work with. So I think it turned out really cute. And then I did use some of that on the backing as well and for the binding. I, she had a really fun red gingham that I used for the binding. It was perfect. And then for the backing, I actually used the multi heart print, but I didn't order enough because I wasn't paying attention to my own fabric. So I ended up having to do a pieced backing. So I ended up using one of my test blocks. I added a little border around it and then some other fabric panels to make it large enough to fit. And once I did that, I thought, you know, people are probably going to want that. So that information is available in the pattern as well. You don't have to do a pieced backing, but if you want to, that info is in there so you can. And I actually really like how it turned out. I might be looking forward to doing some pieced backings in the future. It just makes the back just almost as much fun as the front. And then I also added the label to the roof of the back as well. So it looks like it's meant to be there. So I had a lot of fun with that one. And I'm not sure how long I'm going to have it hanging up for because it's just such a cute quilt and it brings me joy every time I look at it. So it might be hanging up for longer than just February. All right, that's all I have for quilt projects for right now. I do have a couple of knit and crochet finishes that I wanted to share. Now, this first one is a knit project and I have shared this in several previous podcasts. This was actually a MCAL that was for, was it for last Christmas? I think it was from 2022 and I was behind obviously and I just finished it this December. So I wanted to share the finish with you because this was probably one of the larger things I've ever knit and maybe even more complicated things and I'm so proud of how it turned out. So here is the Winter Wonderland scarf and it's so big. I'm probably going to have to insert some video of it here so you can see the whole thing. It's essentially a wrap and you actually knit both sides. So you knit this right side and then the left side, and then you put it together in the middle there with that beautiful snowflake. And so, I mean, it just goes on and on and it looked beautiful, but then when I blocked it, oh my word, it really just came to life and those designs really popped. So each section is a different design which made it a lot of fun. And so as you got done with each section, you were looking forward to moving on to the next. So it is quite large. Mine finished at about 25 inches wide by about 80 inches long. So I don't know if it's just because I'm a loose knitter or if that's just how large this thing is supposed to be, <laughs> but mine is definitely pretty good size. Although the knitted sample in our shop is about the same size. So I think I'm okay. I might be over gauge a little bit, but with a wrap or a shawl, it just doesn't matter. So I did want to show this with you because show this to you because it's just, it was really probably one of my more complicated finishes and I love it so much. I haven't really worn it much. It's been sitting in here waiting to be shown on the podcast. Um, so, but I did want to show you since it's finished, I'm super excited. The yarn that I used was a kit I got from Piney Creek yarn. And I, last time I was in there, I almost want to say they still have a kit left, but it's this Amble yarn kit and the kit itself came with all of these lovely neutral colors. So it comes with this creamy color, that charcoal, charcoal color, and then both of these gray color. So there's sort of this first one, this lighter one's sort of a marled look. And then the other one is a little bit of a darker solid. And I love these colors. They're nice and neutral. And I think they'll really go with pretty much anything that I am wearing. So I'm really happy to finally have this finished and it just turned out so beautiful. So I'm excited to share that finish with you guys. And then my last finish is something that you've probably been seeing this whole video. This is called the Gem Blanket. This is by Wool Thread Paint. She has a Ravelry store and I follow her on Instagram. You can check her out. She has really fun crochet patterns. And this is a medallion style afghan and it was really fun to put together. You just do it in sections. So it looks probably more complicated than it actually is. It goes together very easily and it's just absolutely beautiful. Now I didn't use the size yarn that she called for. I think she might've used a DK. I used my Lori Holt chunky thread, which is really closer to a fingering or sport weight yarn. So I don't know what size hers says it finishes at. Mine finished at about 60 by 60. I'm assuming hers is a little bit larger just because she used a 
little bit heavier weight yarn, but I still love it. It's perfect to toss over the back of a chair or a couch. You can cuddle up with it. Um, I've kind of been threatening my kids a little bit if they're gonna be using this to be really careful because I love it. It's so fun and colorful and I just don't want it to get ruined. <laughs> Is that bad? And it's funny because with my quilts, I'm like, yeah, use them, put them on your beds. We can wash them. This one, for some reason, I'm just being a little bit more picky with, but um, I don't want any of the threads to get pulled out, I think. And sometimes if the kids are laying on it, the dog jumps on and he's got claws and all that. So I am being a little more careful with this blanket. But for the most part, I actually keep it in here on my chair back here. And it just brings a lot of fun color and just coziness into my sewing room. So I will make sure to link this pattern below. I'll have to weigh it to see how many skeins I actually used because again, I wasn't using the called for yarn. So I started out with whatever I had left from the granny square tote that I made. And then I did have to buy some new yarn about halfway through. So I'm not 100% sure how many skeins, but I'll try and weigh it and see if I can do some math for you guys and figure out how many skeins I used. Her finishing I also changed a little bit. So she has you doing a crab stitch around that outside edge. And I just didn't think with this yarn, I think because the yarn is thinner, I didn't think it looked very good. And so I went ahead and did a little puff stitch around this edge. And this stitch is actually the same stitch I used for my granny star afghan. That's a free tutorial here on YouTube. And so if you wanna see how I did that finished edge, you can watch that video because I did it in there. And so I did the exact same one on here just because I like how that edge finished it off. I think hers looked great with the yarn that she was using. She had a thicker, fuzzier yarn. But with this thinner yarn, it really almost looked just sort of sloppy or I don't know. I didn't like the way that the finished edge was. So I did this little puff stitch and I think it just looks a lot better with this particular yarn. So that information, like I said, is in my Granny Star Afghan tutorial here on YouTube. And that's pretty much it for my knit and crochet section. Believe it or not, I don't really have any new acquisitions. I only have one thing that I'm gonna show you because this will be an upcoming tutorial. So I went to my local fabric store and I did buy this, it's like Sherpa fleece. Hopefully you can see that soft fuzzy fleece. And I am going to be doing a bag tutorial with this coming soon. And I believe I'm gonna be using the Coco Knits leather handle kit with it as well. So we're gonna do a little tote bag using this fun material. So stay tuned for that. But other than that, I've been sort of on a spending freeze, I guess you could say, not necessarily on purpose, but I've just been doing a lot of work on the back and using stuff that is already in my sewing room. So I don't have really any new acquisitions for this podcast. But one thing I do have is a bunch of giveaways for you guys. So I've been storing up fabric and patterns and notions from all of my unboxings throughout 2023. And I will be putting together some fun little goodie bags for some of you. So for the giveaway for today, I have three requirements. Number one, make sure you're a subscriber to this channel. You can also hit that like button if you're feeling like being extra friendly. Number two, leave a comment below letting me know whether you're a quilter or a cross stitcher. That way I can decide what to put in your giveaway. And then let me know what your favorite thing from today's podcast was. And then number three, make sure your US only shipping international is really high right now, so I do apologize. I will be picking probably around 10 winners. I have a ton of stuff to give away, so I will be picking from all of those comments below. And somewhere in your comment, add hashtag Erica's podcast. I'm gonna be searching from those hashtags to pick the winners. I will reply to your comment here on YouTube, and I will also add the winners below the video in the description below. So if you get any messages from Tell Telegram or anybody that seems sketchy, please do not give them any information. Go to this video and check the description below the video to see if your name is in there. And if it is, then you have one. And you can send me an email at erica at confessionsofahomeschooler.com and I will get your prize shipped out to you. So thank you so much for watching today's podcast. I hope you enjoyed it. Like I mentioned, if you're not already, make sure to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on any of our upcoming fun. Thank you for joining me today and I will see you next time. You can, of course, always do whatever you like, but I am trying to come up with... Wow, that was loud. Oh, and here comes my son. For this project, I used a mix, again, of fabrics from my stash. These are all fig tree prints, I believe. Are they? Nope, these are Bunny and Camille. Bye, I love you. 
And that's pretty much, and that's pretty much it for 